over. How's it going, guys? It is uh, September 12th, I think. I am now in the grain cart, and I'm hauling grain. So uh, Ashton is now taking over the combine. I was combine for a while. Ashton was hauling grain, and she was grain carting. We are a team, so we like to switch off. That auger is ridiculously long when there's only a pickup header on that thing. Mike, are you gonna go, what are we doing here actually? That's a very good question. I have actually no idea, but we're about to, oh, I don't like going through the dust. I definitely do not like going through the dust. Heads up. You're a little close to my side. Or maybe I uh, didn't quite come under here, quite centered. So, I'm rocking this uh, little thousand bushel grain cart here. Say what? Brought out a grain cart? Absolutely I did. <laughs> Anyways, we got this uh, Brent 1000 bushel grain cart. Normally I pull it with the, the Fent 720, which I've, you guys probably know that I upgraded to the Gen 6 724. But... I needed that for a backup for my grain auger. So we had this tractor sitting here, so we thought, well, we better we, we better use it on the, the, okay. You know what I'm trying to say. Words are hard. Especially since I just woke up from a nap. That's right, I have I had a nap in here while Ashton was combining. I had a little bit of time on my hands and she's like, I am full and I jumped to attention. I had no idea where I was and I'm just trying to regain my composure. That nap there, hon, that's uh, really beat me up here. I'm still trying to wake myself up. Am I full? Yes, you are. Um, you're probably going to be taking off though, right? Yes, so we'll make a plan here to get moved to the other field. I'm going to go top off the truck and then um, I will figure out how we're going to get to the other field. Okay, because I also got to move that dog. Move the what? Oh, the dog. Bentley. Bentley's out here. I was like, what the heck is she trying to say? So, uh, as you guys have know my opinion on these tractors, great pulling tractors, not quite as good as the case in my opinion, but the transmission on them, they're definitely not the funnest for a grain cart. So we can double tap. So we can double tap. You guys can't really see the gears, but uh, we can double tap to speed up our shifting. And it's like we just shifted once. But we're going up two gears at a time. Obviously, with this tractor, I don't even know the spring cars back there. Ten mile an hour is as fast as I go with my grain cart. Okay, I know I have a walk way over there by the truck. Where's my radio here? Yeah, you got a couple behind me there too. It's the truck. Start putting up a auger. Always got to make sure you watch for power lines when you put your auger up because there's been a lot of farmers unfortunately fried because of it. And that is really unfortunate. So please look up when you're putting up your auger. With these triples, I got to get pretty dang close to the truck. But can easily be done. Oh, 
You know, this is actually difficult when you're trying to. I don't like that the auger's on this side. To be honest, I think the Elmers you can uh, get it on this side, and that would be way handier because your controls are over here. So you're already sorry. You're already naturally looking this direction, right? Because you got, you know, your controls are on this side, which run your auger. Your gear shifter is on this side. So everything is over here. And then when you're in the fent, you know, you got your CVT uh, joystick on this side. So it's just handier to look on this side. So now, yes, I can shift my seat over. <clears throat> Struggling, there we go. So I can shift it over, but I'm still on this side. So I still have one arm over here while I'm doing it. It can be done. We obviously do it. All of our grain carts are on this side, but I prefer it if it was on that side. Just my two cents. I'm actually almost too close. So if you notice, this auger, this unload auger on this grain cart does not have the swivel pivoting spout. So on our other two grain carts, they're also Brents, yes, but they're a newer version and you can get the pivoting spout to go this way you know, so if you're too close, you can tip it in. If you're not close enough, you can tip it out. But also this way, so you can top off without having to move your tractor. <sighs> I know a lot of people probably think that they're super duper handy, but uh, we despise them. We hate them. And if we could get just a normal hydraulic, simple, dimple, easy, on like a 2000 or a 2500 bushel cart, we would take it all day long. Why do you ask? Mike, they're putting that spout on there to save you time and misery and so on and so forth. No, it causes misery and it causes me time because it still has sensors up there. And if that pivoting spout for some reason gets stuck over here, or maybe you bring it over here, but the sensor doesn't recognize it, you can't fold your whole auger back down. Yeah, believe it or not, a sensor on a freaking grain cart will keep you from holding your own. So what do we do? We got to skimmy up to the edge of the grain cart and you're just tapping on the sensor or you're just trying to, because they're magnetic or whatnot, you're just trying to move the sensor a little bit so that way the auger comes back down. What a pain in the butt. Just give me three hydraulics. One for my auger up down. Oh, and then one for my auger tilt, like this one. Okay, that's the one. Then auger fold is the other one. And then the third hydraulic is my gate. Right here, right there, right there there oops sorry about that one to ten okay also on our two uh, Brents we have joysticks so we know obviously you just plug into one hydraulic and then you're just rocking a joystick you've got all your buttons on it for your spout and you actually have a trigger on it for your gate so everything's on your joystick then you can swivel over with your joystick I suppose and look this direction you still have to drive but you still can look this direction but you know what it's a pain in the butt you know why they do have a holder for it, so that way you can take your joystick, your nice fancy dancy joystick, put it up there. But if you guys know that we actually have it in our RT2 uh, track, and that thing is rougher than Billy B. Dog, so uh, what happens? It falls off, or maybe you're in a hurry and you thought that you clicked it, or maybe whatever. Maybe you just threw it down just for the sake of whatever, and uh, it touches that trigger, and you're opening your gate while it's down here jiggling across the field and now you just opened your gate and you plug your bottom auger so ask me how we know that so anyways we're not we're not joystick people okay we do not like it oh another thing is you have to wire that joystick in you got to wire it into your batteries you got to have power um, or you got to wire it into a power point of some place no just give me three simple hydraulics did you know that the 1594 or 1500 bushel cart is about as big as you can get to my knowledge with just a simple spout. You know how easy it is? Sorry, I don't mean to continue to rant on here, but you know how easy it is? If all of a sudden one tractor goes down, you're like, just un undo the three hydraulics, drop your pin, boom, stick another tractor on, bang, you're ready to go. Joystick, wiring harness, no. You wise just call tech and wait for your tractor to get going. All right, enough about that, let's start offloading here. I'm a little bit close, I see, which is probably a first time. You can open this thing up all the way. Oh, hold on here. I've got issues. Sorry about that. My seat slid back and I was dumping and I need my seat to be in one spot. 
Normally I have my foot on the clutch, ready to go. That's the downside with power shifts, they're quite jerky. My other foot is on the brake, holding me because we're dumping on a hill. And normally I keep one finger on the gate, ready to close it. And obviously you can control how fast that you want it to come out. We're just kind of taking it easy, you know? I don't want any spillage, I don't want to have to shovel. That's the last one. This goofy trailer actually has three because it's actually a B train, not a Super B on this particular one. We don't fill it, no. It's a pain in the butt. I'm gonna slow this down because I'm gonna have to top up. Okay, I guess I can go a little faster. Hold on, I'm having issues. I can go a little faster. When we actually have a crop to cut, our grain cart guys, they're a lot quicker. They just roll in, dump real fast, they know exactly what they're doing, but I guess if you dump to 500 tart loads, you probably get pretty dang fast in as well. Go. Oh. Jerky, jerky. Shut it off. Shut it off, shut it off, shut it off, shut it off. Woo! We're gonna top up that last trailer. Ooh. Right there. Sorry about that, guys. I had to top off that truck without holding my phone. So we're ready to go, we're loaded and the cart is just barely empty. All right, let's roll out. winding up, love it. All right guys, I'll see you when we get there. All right, so obviously this isn't uh, my yard. Um, these are my father-in-law's bins that he is allowing me to use. Due to the drought, everyone's got spare bin space, so, uh, and of course I don't have any. <laughs> but we hauled most of it off the combine. But. As I was just double checking things here, I couldn't help but notice, um, see that slop? So, 
there's a pin here, a bolt here, and a bolt here. These are your shear pins. So if you were to, I don't know, fill the bin up or something, and this is to keep your auger from twisting in half. But anyway, they're loose. So I just gotta quickly fix that. All right, I got those uh, pins tightened up. I actually put new ones in. We want to keep a sample of all this stuff. You want to have a sample of, uh, of all your products so that way you can send it away to the grain buyers. So every so often, you just do that. On the new trailers, they have cranks on both sides. That would be handy right now because, yeah, for obvious reasons. trailers it's always good just to roll back your tarps a little bit a little bit of air in otherwise it wants to suck your tarp down which can bend your hoops on the newer trailers I do believe they're all vented so you don't actually have to do that unless you're just gonna dump it at almighty speed in which case you normally on the new trailers that have air rides you dump your air suspension too these are old spring rides so you don't gotta do that oh I think I'm in It's like a two-hand job doing the gates. Can't remember if I said this or not, but this is what happens if uh, your hopper gets run over. <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do it. That's what happened. When you're done, since it's such a small area in here, you got to go eh, 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 about three times, normally, to get this thing out. Yeah. Also, it's handy having the uh, PTO button right here. I don't have to run back and hit side the cab. I can just hit that and shut it off. Easy peasy. All right, we've got it out of that second trailer. We're gonna go pull forward just a little bit. Ugh. Like you have an engine warning light on. Yeah, I know it's kind of pure, uh, periodic. And right about. There. You want to be able to hit both hoppers at the same time, which we can do. Tarps rolled back just a little bit. Sorry about that. There you go. All right. Grab our crank. So you think it will start it? Like a soft start, not like a I'm gonna smash it all the heck. Actually, correction. You can turn it on from the PTO and off, obviously, but if you just gotta hold it for like three or five seconds. So the tractor is idled to about 1300. RPM or something like that. So let's just hold this thing. It's got a soft start. There we go. So while we're here offloading, I just want to point out that these are not Super Bs, okay? These are B trains. A Super B, see this framework right under here, would have a third axle right here. It's called the bridge. Um, these are pretty old trailers but they have all new gear under them. Uh, new drums, new pads, new uh, slack adjusters, and bearings, I do believe. So, 
These are pretty old trailers, like I said. I think they're like a 1994 or something like that. So that's getting pretty old. But uh, I don't know why it's not a Super B, because they actually did make Super Bs back in the day. But for whatever reason, they also made some B trains. And in this trailer, it's a really goofy one. It actually has three hoppers, which is just boggles my mind. There's a third hopper right back there. It drops out over this back axle. You can kind of see where the cancer goes up there. Yeah, this trailer has some cancer. And then it's got two smaller ones right here. And because of that, I think they actually condensed this a little bit more uh, than a regular Super B. So it makes getting the uh, hopper in a, a real procedure, okay? As you, I just pointed out, it takes like three times to get it in. It's handy if you have somebody there with you but obviously, currently I do not. Now, we don't have these swing type augers on our main augers back home. We have the Radano. You just pull up beside it, it stays vertical, and it just slides right underneath. Grab one, grab two, hydraulically slide it back up. Drive to the next one, slide underneath. You get the idea. This doesn't do that. This has to swing. Now with that back axle, with this axle missing here, holy crap, we're empty. Anyway, as I was saying, on these particular older trailers, since it's missing this third axle under the bridge, it makes this swing really easy. Unfortunately, that makes up for the gong show of it. We have actually just unhooked this trailer just around this one because it's so easy. But... And as you know, this isn't my auger. And you know that Ernie isn't on it. Ernie was brought up for a 13-inch auger. Remember all that work and everything that we put into these augers? Well, on its first load, took out its gearbox. And uh, so we just had to park it. So this older auger, which is still a 13-inch by 70, when I brought up here, exact same, is my father-in-law. They don't use the Radonos. Not that I have a Radono on that old one I brought up either, but... I put the fence on it because I had to move 16 miles. That's not super fun with old Ernie, not very good road gear. And there's no lights or power around here. So when you're dumping at night, you can't see nothing. So the fence is like dumping during daylight with all the lights. So that's the down low on that. We want to back up here without running over our auger. And right there. Kind of time consuming. Definitely makes you appreciate the uh, uh, the Redonal. Really like the Redonal. But still super appreciated to be able to use the auger. All right, I'm gonna tarp up and we're heading back to Ashton.
Boulevard is full, I see. Ashton's over there flashing, I see. So, I guess we better pity pattern. You always want to park the truck downhill and on the way out before you load. Just makes it easier on it. Hey Bentley, how's it going? Oh, and as I'm running by here, you're probably asking yourself, Mike, if you want to stay out of the dust, buddy, you know, when you're trucking, just get the electric gates, the electric chute openers. Easy peasy, have a little remote control, stand on the other side, life's breezy. Actually, this trailer did have them. We took them off uh, because like all electronics, they do fail. And uh, Brian, my younger brother, he actually has a story because, you know, we had them on. We thought, you know, that's obviously the right way. That's the way we got to go. That's what everyone's doing. That's what the cool kids do. And uh, there was a short in the, uh, right here. It was, there's a short in the box. And uh, as he was crossing into the terminal, 100 miles away, they decided that they were going to open up all the gates wide open. He dropped all his load before he even got inside the terminal. There was a whole pile of trucks behind him and he I don't know if he just hit a bump, but anyway, it shorted out, opened up every gate. There was 1,500 bushel laying in the driveway, in the freaking driveway. So, as soon as we got home, we ripped all those things off all our trailers and threw them in the pit. That's what we did. Where's Bentley? Move Bentley, whoever you might be. Yeah, like how's it going out here? Um, I think we're gonna have a few more semis than we think. Where's all this barley coming from? It's all the hollows. Thought we'd be done like a truck or two ago and here we're still going. It's a good problem, I'm not complaining. Go this way. Oops, sorry. I'm only running at 50% capacity on the unmold auger here. Any faster than that? Mike always makes a mess. There 
There it is. Okay, let's go and grab uh, Ashton over there. Too fast. 10 mile an hour is too fast. Some guys, man, I think some guys actually cart at like 20 mile an hour. I can't imagine how. That is incredibly hard on equipment. I don't even like going against the drill rows. Get doing my job here. That auger is like 37 crazy feet or something like that. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You gotta have walkie talkies to communicate, even if we're each standing on the equipment. Doing about 221. Oh, okay, okay. Uh oh. I can't go right now because uh, her auger is dipping down. She's coming on this side hill and I don't want to hit it. That's one thing about picking up on the go, you guys. You have to watch these dips because you'll dip that auger right inside the cart and you will shear pins on that thing. Now I think we're good to go. It's a bad time to unload on the go. Oh, where's my where's my radio here? No worries, just dump. I don't want to lose my auger. Yeah, I know, I was just commenting about that in the video, how uh, it's very easy to dip that long auger down into the grain cart. So the ideals, um, I think on the newer models, they are actually raising that auger up, but right now it's still, it's not as high as I would like to see it. And that has been a complaint, and I do believe that they are addressing that issue. But that doesn't help us with our current models. I didn't get used to this auger length. I don't think I lined up to the cart one. I know, it's so hard, right? You're gonna have to dangle uh, something off the end of it. So I might need just a little bit more from you here. Uh... <laughs> Okay, I need a 
you know, to hold up my mic here. I don't know why I don't have that yet. All right, let's get out of our way. also pick up little stones and rocks and stuff like that and tuck them in your header. Also, if you have a thin crop like this, it's hard to get. We aren't getting it all by the look of it under there, but the heavier the sand or the swath, the easier it is to pick it up. Why did we do this? It was hanging green, hanging green, hanging green. It's never gonna come in, so we got a patient. We just knocked it down. Uh oh, all good. She just wanted to talk to me. Off camera, I guess. Barley crop's actually doing pretty good. are quite dewy and tough so uh, you don't get a very early start in the morning from what I'm learning I don't know anyways it is coming together hopefully we'll be done the barley tonight and we're, ro uh, we're already done the lentils and we're gonna roll right into canola that's our last crop up here so we're pretty excited about that so I think this video is getting a little long thanks for hanging out catch you on the flip side adios amigos